recording. So we are all set. Excellent. So I'm going to share the screen. Um, so again, I'm not going to be able to see the chat, but if people have questions, please throw them out there uh, and then we'll be able to address them on the fly. Um, so let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Delmar Larson. I'm a professor of chemistry at the University of California, Davis. Uh, I'm the founder and director of the Libertex project, which is now close to 16 years old. Um, and so it's a fairly mature project in the OER community that focused for most of that time on distributing of content, largely textbook content uh, and similar uh, based content. However, recently in the last few years, we started to expand into homework, which is the whole topic of today's conversation. So. <clears throat> uh, before starting, I would ask you a question. How do you build an online homework system that complements the utility of the LibreText infrastructure uh, and is flexible, dynamic, comprehensive, integrated, LMS agnostic, uh, powerful, uh, and free or nearly free? Uh, and these are the criteria that we're using in terms of building a homework system to, again, complement our textbook infrastructure that we provide within what we refer to as the greater Libreverse of technologies for promoting OER in the landscape. Uh, and the answer to that, um, as you said, free or nearly free, I didn't pop up. The answer to that is essentially very slowly and very efficiently. In fact, when we started our project back in 2008, we knew that we wanted to build a comprehensive infrastructure that would be able to complement uh, by mirroring commercial publishers in order to be able to take the place of what commercial publishers provide. You know? And that means textbooks, that means question banks, that means a homework infrastructure, that means ancillary materials, everything that constitutes golden handcuffs that they put onto faculty in the classroom in order to tie them into their commercial product. In order to be able to address that, we need to give everything out there comprehensively, uh, and we've been pursuing that goal for a while. We're very happy with how we've progressed. We deliver somewhere in the order of 900,000 page views of content uh, of our textbooks. Uh, Adapt is still a few years old, um, but we have somewhere in the order of about uh, 13,000 students who are using it this term, uh, and it's growing exponentially. And part of the point of me presenting this at this workshop is to uh, show you what you have access to. So the key aspect behind ADAPT is that we're trying to build an infrastructure, again, to take the place of a commercial product that has, uh, <coughs> where commercial products typically have millions of dollars and many, many man hours of time dedicated in order to building the final product that's out there. So in trying to build an alternative to, to that, we don't want to be able to address it from scratch and build it. Uh, up from there, it's better to uh, capitalize on existing technologies, more specifically open source technologies in order to be able to pursue this, which is exactly what the O in open source means. And that's what the O in OER means. Uh, it's the sharing is caring model. And that's how we've been pursuing uh, this. So the outcome of what we've made is adapt. Uh, and and I'll talk about where the name comes from a little bit later on in this conversation. But the approach off of that is it serves both as a question bank for faculty in order to be able to capitalize on and as a homework platform for faculty in order to uh, allow students in order to submit and then evaluate uh, uh, either auto graded or open ended grading and go through all the stuff that you'd expect for a commercial uh, publisher, <laughs> commercial homework system that is. So. And just to give the outcome of it, and then I'll get into uh, details behind what ADAPT is. Um, it, the question bank of ADAPT is freely available for any verified instructor anywhere. Um, and I should broaden that to not just verified instructors, instructional designers, librarians, basically not students. Uh, and the point of that is that we need to preserve the integrity of the corpus of questions because we want to use this as a homework system. And if everything is found searchable on Chag or Course Hero, it defeats most of the point of what we're trying to do. Uh, I will also mention that most of what we host uh, is meant to be OER uh, and then freely distributed so you can use it as you want outside of that, uh, <clears throat> including answers and solutions and other aspects of that. So actually this, this number is not accurate. It's 190,000 questions and is growing rapidly. Uh, uh, and I don't know any faculty member that does not want to have access to a massive question bank of available questions, but I'm sure I'd probably find someone uh, somewhere, something like that. So. 
the vast majority of the investment into building ADAPT uh, came from the state of California. Uh, and that was because the state of California wanted their faculty and more specifically their students in order to have access to a free homework system uh, that's out there. Uh, so any faculty and student in the state of California gets gets access to these things. I should say students get access to the courses, the con questions in the courses that are enrolled in, not to the whole corpus, again, getting back to uh, preserving that. However, uh, outside the state of California, um, uh, we need to be able to uh, implement some sort of sustainability model because maintaining the ADAPT homework system is a bit more complicated, in fact, appreciably more complicated than being able to maintain a hosting system for uh, distributing your textbooks uh, that we have for the uh, within our Libreverse. Uh, so uh, we set this thing up to be what I refer to as super cheap uh, uh, so that students and faculty can use the content outside as a homework system. Again, it's freely available for instructors in order to tap into the question bank, uh, irrespective of whether you want to use the platform out there. Um, uh, the key point off of here is that, again, we need a sustainability model for what we've done, and uh, this is the mechanism that we're using in order to preserve that. The price point, which will invariably come up, is somewhere between $10 to $15 per student per term, a maximum of $30 per year, irrespective of how many classes they make. We try to operate at cost. Let me phrase that. Our goal is to operate at cost. So we're not trying to find out how to what's the maximum price point that we can make that people are willing to accept. It's trying to find what's the minimum that we can operate in order to be able to uh, sustain what we're doing. Yeah. And that's for the benefit of everybody, because if we were to collapse, then what's the point of building what we're doing? So anyways, uh, let me get into what ADAPT is. Uh, and if people have questions about that, I can certainly address that at a uh, later time during this presentation. Um, so ADAPT is built for multimodal use. Uh, it, it has multiple technologies uh, in order to be able to facilitate multiple uses. Uh, in fact, questions and ADAPT is designed to either be auto-graded or to be open-ended. Um, because they're just questions that auto grade capabilities are unable to address. Auto grade questions are obviously questions that uh, the technology themselves evaluate uh, the student submissions without having any human involved in it. Open ended questions require a human in order to deal with that. Um, and there are, again, needs in most classes in order to have some auto grade capabilities and some open ended capabilities. Uh, uh, for example, in my upper divisional quantum mechanics class, uh, a lot of my uh, questions tend to be open ended, uh, requiring having to evaluate proofs and uh, discussions on things that require a bit more thinking that autograde is unable to do. However, who knows where chat GPT and AI is going to come in uh, in the future in order to be able to perhaps mix those things. Um, so for open ended capabilities that require again, a human in order to evaluate students can submit text. <coughs> They can submit audio that's useful for languages uh, and music classes, uh, or they can submit files like PDFs, images, Excel files, or other things, uh, again, for review uh, by students. Uh, we have played a little bit with ChatGPT in order to help facilitate grading, um, and if people are interested in that, I could talk about that. Um, but by and large, most of these things require full human uh, evaluations. The auto grade uh, questioning requires a lot more sophistication in order to implement than open ended. And we have a range of different technologies in order to facilitate that. Uh, again, capitalizing on the sharing is caring model and using open source technologies uh, as we uh, need. Uh, so uh, embedded into ADAPT uh, is a fully working infrastructure uh, around web work. Web work. Web work is a math based infrastructure, although it's also been used in uh, other fields that originated out of the University of Rochester um, uh, by Mike Gage, uh, but has expanded a lot since then. Uh, and it's uh, particularly uh, used in R1 institutions and upper divisional classes. IMath AS complements web work in being also a math based infrastructure uh, that is the same technology that underlies MyOpenMath. Uh, which is quite popular in the open in open field. Um, it's also the same technology that underlies OM, which is the for profit uh, for profit alternative uh, that uh, Lumen Learning provides to campuses. Um, so both of these technologies are available. IMath AS is more popular in the community colleges and the first two in schools that focus on the first two uh, years of of uh, education post-secondary education. Complementing these fairly advanced technologies is H5P, 
uh, H5P is an interactive infrastructure that you can build uh, engaging assessments that people can work with. It has other issues that I'll be talking about momentarily. That server is uh, that hosts our H5P is at studio, what we call studio, and you can access it at studio.libretext.org right now. I'll pull up a snippet of that, and if we have time, I can actually pull it up in real time. You can build, uh, you can distribute, you can then use things directly from this repository. It's a centralized repository, which has benefits over uh, alternative, more fragmented approaches that other technologies pursue. Lastly, uh, the other autograde uh, infrastructure we have is what I refer to as native, and that's the infrastructure that we have embedded directly into ADAPT itself instead of using these secondary servers, uh, and that includes, for example, QTI. If you're unfamiliar with that term or that acronym, QTI is Question and Test Interoperability. It's the protocol that's used for your learning management system quizzing infrastructure. So if you have question banks in Canvas, you can embed them into ADAPT. And I'll show you hopefully why that that's beneficial. Actually, uh, hopefully you'll appreciate why that's beneficial because we provide a lot more benefit uh, or utility behind those questions than what Canvas provides uh, to you. And we also expanded uh, within the native category uh, a set of next generation nursing questions, which we presented a few hours ago at this meeting with Kim Ernst Meyer uh, and the Open RN team at uh, Chippewa Valley Community College or Technical uh, School. <laughs> Um, uh, and I'll let you guys take a look at that if nursing is a particular interest to it because there's a far more detail behind it and, um, and I'm not um, a subject matter expert in that field. So the key point here, uh, and this is a, an issue for ADAPT in general, is that it's built to be a very powerful infrastructure with lots of capa capabilities. Um, it does require a bit of mastery in order to figure out which ones you want to do, but it's able to address uh, multiple needs of faculty. Now, uh, so let me talk about what this entails or why we built it in this case here. So it, let's say you took web work and this applies to any homework infrastructure. It has a, typically a homework infrastructure has a series of services or applications that are part of it in order to make it work effectively. For example, web work uh, will have a problem builder. Uh, it'll have a problem library. It'll have a problem searcher through that library. It has an assessment delivery in order to how to deliver that question. It will have some sort of auto graded assessment checker. Uh, it will have a grade book and then it'll have an interface to learning management system. Yeah. And this one here, each of these things will be customized and unique to web work. IMAP AS has its own infrastructure that's very similar, right? at least in functionality, but completely different technology, completely different interface, completely different user experience through IMAP AS and web work. And H5P, although it's not designed in order to be a homework infrastructure per se, at least summative, uh, would have something similar, or QTI via your learning management system. The key point is if you want to capitalize on questions from all these uh, different technologies right now, unless you combine them together, which is what ADAPT does, you need to master all these points. And invariably what happens is that faculty only master one of these uh, set of uh, collections, and then they don't merge onto something else because it's a completely different new infrastructure. What ADAPT does is essentially take these different technologies <laughs> and centralize the parts that can be centralized. For example, uh, uh, combining the problem library uh, into a single library, irrespective of the technology that's available, being able to do a search across all the technologies uh, that, that you have in the corpus, have a centralized grade book and a centralized learning management system. That means that the interface that a student uses or faculty member uses that in their Spanish class would be the same in a chemistry class or same in a uh, psychology class. Um, so that reduces the cognitive load that's necessary for students in order to be able to learn new interfaces. But it also makes it available for the, the instructor in order to build, uh, bring questions from web work and combine them with IMAP AS and H5P and QTI into a range of different technologies. And you don't care about what the technology is, you care about what the question addresses. And the bigger that becomes, the more powerful it is for everybody in order to be able to use that. This is one of the reasons that ADAPT has taken a while in order to build, because it's a complicated infrastructure that combines these things together for the benefit of um, faculty. And we're expanding that greatly 
the state of California just gave us a $4 million grant in order to expand, adapt massively, mostly in the STEM fields, uh, where we'll start to bring in new technology and utility, including um, things that could be useful for, well, I'll talk about the, 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 the future off of there, but this is a very powerful approach uh, for people to do. So, ADAPT is built for multimodal use for different applications. Uh, ADAPT can be accessed via the ADAPT website. So if you go to adapt.libertex.org and you have an instructor account, you can log in and you can prepare everything there. Students can log into it directly um, and, and it would accompany any textbook, whether it's a Libertex book or a commercial product. Uh, the key point is to start to edge away the commercial infrastructure in our classroom. We can embed questions directly into our textbook. Those questions can be used formatively or summatively where summative means that we have a grade book behind it and students need to sign in in order to be able to do those questions. Uh, formative means that we provide those questions uh, as a learning experience uh, for uh, things. Uh, and uh, students then access their homework uh, through their textbook. So in this concept, ADAPT itself doesn't exist as a separate entity. Uh, students oftentimes don't even know it exists. They just do their homework in their textbook. There's no clear evidence that this mechanism is better than direct, traditional, uh, separate website approach. However, uh, my personal opinion is anything that facilitates greater engagement between the student and the textbook and the textbook content will invariably have some impact in improving learning. But I don't have any uh, data behind that, and I haven't found anything in the literature behind that. We will be releasing in uh, later on this calendar year um, a, a phone app that will be an interface to uh, the, the ADAPT, similar to the website, uh, but it's native in the browser. It has a few additional features, like for being able to tap into the phone, not the phone, tap into the camera capabilities in order to up, take pictures and submit it in that way. This mechanism not over not only is useful for students that prefer phones as the primary mechanism to interact with the internet. It also provides a mechanism for faculty to use adapt as an in class polling system. In other words, if you have your students pay for eye clickers adapt will take the place of that. So not only will this save $40 per semester for homework, it will also save another $40 per semester for eye clickers all available centralized and ready to rock. Uh, and lastly, uh, actually, all of these mechanisms uh, that students uh, uh, submit their, their submissions, uh, uh, the scores from them can be passed back to the learning management system via what's called QTI. Um, and in Canvas, we also have an API, which provides a single button interface between uh, ADAPT and Canvas. Uh, so the key point is that uh, while we have grade books on ADAPT and actually more powerful grade books than Canvas, you don't have to use them. You can interface everything and keep uh, your learning management system uh, as the primary mechanism for uh, interfacing with the students. This is a quick example of a uh, H5P problem, multiple choice or true false, that's embedded into an intermediate nutrition book from Kansas State University, where the students can read something and then they get a question right directly there. It's part of what I refer to as the textbook of the future, which is invariably involves a textbook of technology. And this one is one step forward in terms of being able to make that. So um, this is a, a video, at least in terms of um, the phone app that we're going to be releasing soon. Again, like I mentioned to you, it provides a mechanism in order to allow students in order to interact with ADAPT natively uh, without the clunkiness that web browsers will sometimes have on, um, on ADAPT. It also provides us a mechanism to capitalize on the camera, uh, QR code interfaces so that if you're using this, for example, in laboratories, uh, you want students to take a picture of what they're doing, they can upload that. Uh, it also provides a mechanism uh, to take pictures of uh, work that they want to upload uh, for partial credit or full credit, <laughs> depending upon your infrastructure. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it provides a mechanism in order to, uh, uh, to be a uh, in-class polling infrastructure. Uh, that we're very excited about. This is video is about to pull up an H5P video that or H5P assessment for distillation. Uh, so for those of you that may be teaching that, uh, you'll see a distillation curve that right there uh, that the students are able to access really quickly and get the answer out. Uh, and it's reflective of the greater scope of 
um, of ADAPT. So uh, ADAPT is built for multimodal use. Uh, <clears throat> so students interact with the problems uh, either traditionally or in adaptive learning. So I mentioned before that ADAPT uh, is named ADAPT for a specific reason, and that's because it has adaptive learning. So the traditional way in which we distribute questions is that we make courses. Courses have assignments, assignments have questions, and those uh, those assignments are open at a specific date and time and closed at a specific date and time when students do the questions. Again, traditional in the, in the way that learning management systems operate. However, <laughs> we don't need to use simple questions. We can actually build something more advanced. So adaptive learning uh, is a catch-all phrase to um, to include uh, to describe an infrastructure that dynamically changes or at least provides a, a different experience for students um, depending upon different students backgrounds profiles interactions and such like that uh, one mechanism to pursue that is a black box learning uh, team like the uh, the algorithm that you have out there in multiple platforms, that takes a lot of money and investment in order to be able to build. We went to the other side and, and took a white box, something that's obvious in terms of how the educational experience is, uh, is given to the students, uh, and it's based off of decision trees. Um, we call them learning trees within this context, and the point behind that is instead of giving a single question, we give a tree, and the tree consists of a root question that would normally be the only question, but behind that question has a series of nodes that are either exposition meant to instruct uh, or their questions in order to evaluate components necessary in order to master that question. So it acts as a virtual tutor. So if a student fails this, they can come in and they can get some feedback off of certain skills necessary in order to be able to master that. Yeah. There's uh, an opportunity in order for them to get a do-over off of here, so it, it's more of a carrot than a stick-based approach. And in contrast to what I was talking about embedding um, homework into textbooks and not having much data out there, there's lots of data in order to argue that this is a superior-based approach to just the question by itself. The issue here is it takes a bit of effort in order to be able to build these trees. Uh, and we've done that for about 150 general chemistry trees, uh, and we're going to be expanding them at about 500 trees per year for the next four years in the STEM fields, um, broadly defined. There are other people who are building these trees uh, than our team, focusing on, for example, Spanish as a second language, uh, which I have nothing to do with building because I would just destroy them. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a very powerful way in order to make a better learning experience uh, for your students than just a single question, traditional based approach off there. We're very excited about this. It's relatively simple. And one of the key benefits off of here, uh, if it's not so obvious, is that it provides the way that, let me phrase that, the way that this is done is that students go into the tree and they get to evolve on the tree on their own. They decide which skills they want to learn in order to be a master. So they, they develop um, an agency that they don't have in other approaches. And anything that introduces students to some level of agency increases engagement, and engagement typically increases learning. This also provides a mechanism for students in order to uh, build metacognition skills. So students will have an opportunity in order to say, well, to master this question, they need to master three different skills. And they can come in and say, well, I, they may decide that they learn one skill, they already mastered it, that this one skill may be something that they need to address. So they can essentially use their, um, their evolution uh, or to guide their evolution on the learning tree based on their ability to understand what they know and what they don't know. And those are exceedingly important skill set for students in order to master instead of what a black box would do, because that spoon feeds students what they want to do. And they come out with a, with a the student that graduate with that infrastructure are more fragile than students that are have uh, agency and have developed metacognition skills. Similarly, the same thing with self-efficacy based approaches, or uh, self-efficacy. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the technologies that are there because you probably or many people um, who are watching this presentation have some familiarity with some of the technologies I mentioned. So I mentioned that we had these four technologies, uh, WebWork, IMAPAS, QTI, or native, um, and H5P. Uh, and the issue that comes up here is which technology do people do use in order to be able to address the issue? 
And that's a very good question in order to, um, to address. So the way I view these sort of technologies is like going to a restaurant. So when you go to a restaurant, you come out and the, uh, the waiter or server is, uh, provides to you a menu, and then you select on the menu what you want. Uh, and that's fine and dandy, and the menu may be extensive or maybe relatively short, depending upon how the restaurant operates. Um, and you basically are only allowed to select on the menu. Uh, and that is how um, you know, your learning management system operates. So here are 10 to 15 questions, and that's it. So you want to build anything else? You want a different type of question? You can't do it because it's on the menu. Same thing applies to H5P, although H5P has up to 50 different assessments, whereas uh, learning management systems typically have seven to eight that are typically used. Web work and IMATH AS are, is, a, uh, is akin to uh, ignoring the waiter and then moving to the back in the kitchen and then getting access to all the skills, is that all the uh, tools that uh, and ingredients that the chef has in the back, and then you can create whatever you want. The issue is, that's only going to be good if you know the tool and know how to put that together. So you need a bit more training, better training, in order to be able to create these new, beautiful questions in web work and IMATH AS versus QTI and H5P, which is a more menu-based approach. That being said, you can do some questions uh, like multiple choice in all four of them. Uh, the, the point is that, uh, what I'm trying to get to this slide here, is that you choose the technology that's best suited for what you want to do. Uh, and that you have the ability in order to do. In order to address that, it's more than just complexity. There are a few other issues in order to bring up. Uh, and I oftentimes push this in my presentations in order to make sure people understand the utility and the limitations of these technologies, even if you decide to use them outside of uh, the ADAPT infrastructure, which is available for you. Uh, so uh, I will mention that we are expanding this into organic chemistry, spreadsheets, Jupyter notebook system. I mentioned clicker systems and a handful of other technologies, again, thanks to the state of California. So web work, IMATH, AS, and QTI uh, are what's referred to as server-side evaluations. Those are questions that are evaluated on our computer, not your computer. That is the computer that's sitting, um, that's that the student would actually solve the problem on. That means it's difficult to hack, uh, not impossible, but difficult to hack into it, uh, and it's secure. Uh, H5P is not secure. Anyone who tells you H5P is a homework system by itself is either lying to you or incompetent. It is not. Now, you can hack into it. How can you hack into it? On your browser, if you press F12, you'll see the console and you'll see the answer to that question right there, if it's an H5P. Alternatively, if you turn off the internet, you could submit the answer, get the, get the answer back, and then turn on the internet and submit it. So if I'm telling you this, students already know about this, uh, now, if it's all students, it, it doesn't matter. The key point is H5P is not a homework system, and there are people in the community that like to tell people and sell H5P as that, and they are completely destroying uh, what H, uh, the complexities necessary in order to be able to do homework effectively. The la second thing is accessibility. So we have a legal and ethical requirement in order to ensure that all parts of the resources that we give to students are accessible. Um, such that students with disabilities are able to use it effectively along with students that don't have accessibility. Web work, IMATH, AS, and QTI have full accessibility capabilities, which means that somebody, my team or other people, can go in and fix accessibility issues that pop up. Uh, and they pop up all the time. H5P has very limited control over that, uh, so hence it has a lot of accessibility issues. Uh, in order to address that on the studio, since we can't fix them, uh, we could provide feedback on how to use a, uh, H5P assessments uh, in an in a in accessible manner uh, or workflows in order to be able to facilitate that. Uh, and if we have time, I'll pull up the studio in order to show that. Otherwise, I encourage you to take a look at that. Even if you're using H5P on any other platform, our set of accessibility guidelines uh, is unique and powerful in order to be able to guide instructors in order to make them in an accessible manner. Because the vast majority of H5P are either not accessible or not made in an accessible manner. Uh, so 
Those are the issues that are involved in terms of selecting which technology you want to do. I will mention again that WebWork and IMAP AS are very powerful infrastructures to make very unique technologies, very unique question types, algorithmic variability, graphing, lots of things like that. Very powerful stuff. Requires a bit of complexity. QTI is relatively simple to do. Use H5P is relatively simple. This is more graphical, but it has lots of other issues that are involved in that. So, <clears throat> Getting to near the end, it'll give us a bit of opportunity in order to answer any questions that may have popped up. Uh, the work, general workflow that we have here is that we have a set of questions, whether they're open ended, the QTI, or these other technologies. Those are assessment technologies that are embedded into ADAPT. So it's ADAPT as an overlay. You don't need to know that these technologies exist. You can just grab the questions that you want within ADAPT. You can embed your questions in ad, uh, ADAPT directly in your textbook and distribute it that way. You can have students access ADAPT directly, and both of those can process uh, uh, scores uh, to your learning management system, typically via real-time LTI, that's within seconds after the student has submitted it. Um, you have access to not just single questions, but you can, uh, you can use learning trees, and you also have access to polling infrastructure. This is what we've built over the last several years, meant in order to be the primary OER supplement for textbooks, in order to be able to do what we all want OER to do. This is a quick snapshot of what uh, the Libre Studio or Studio uh, looks like. Um, this was taken a while ago. <coughs> you can again access that studio um, and you have, uh, in this case here, a range of questions that were recently uh, uh, added into it within the last, that in that case, a day before it. You have collections, brown subjects. We have everything that you would expect as a central repository for H5P. If people create H5P uh, on a different platform and they want to contribute it to us, please let us know and we can embed it into our platform so everyone can uh, capitalize on it. This right here is a snapshot of ADAPT, more specifically my classes in ADAPT or my courses. Um, it, and I've used this for about 12 different courses uh, since we started building it. Uh, and I've been very excited in order to be able to do it. My students have been very excited in order to be able to use it. Um, maybe not my earlier students where we had a little bit more bugs than we have now, uh, but nonetheless, it provided uh, the alternative to a commercial product and hence uh, gave the students more money in their pocket and hence they were excited. Um, I mentioned a handful of different technologies uh, that, that were there. Uh, this right here is a native technology. That's the technology I mentioned with uh, QTI. Uh, so it shows you, for example, in making a, a numerical based thing, you make a prompt and you enter in the number. This is exactly how you'd be doing it in your learning management system because it uses the same protocol. So in other words, if you wanna build native questions, you already know how to go about doing that. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, this is an example of the sort of question types that we have with the next generation nursing infrastructure, which is more unique question types than what normal QTI provides. And this was again, thanks to a partnership with the next generation team at uh, Chippewa Valley. Um, and uh, there again was a video a couple hours ago from the same conference that uh, went into more detail behind here. Uh, and I'm not gonna do that. Um, H5P, um, this is how you actually build a question which it, interface is not terribly dissimilar to the interface that's used for learning management systems uh, because it has a similar uh, simplicity in terms of how, how you operate uh, with that. What is more complicated, like I mentioned to you, is web work, where you, uh, the way you create the question is by coding. So if you're uncomfortable with coding, this is not quite the technology that you want to use to build questions. It doesn't mean that you can't use the questions that are already created in the corpus, which is already pretty big for you to tap into. And similarly, IMAP AS or MyOpenMath uh, that my open Map uses has a similar uh, coding infrastructure. So again, this is why uh, it's the STEM fields that tend to be uh, uh, use the uh, web work and IMAP AS um, infrastructure. So I will end with what I started. How do you build an online homework system that complements the utility of the LibreText infrastructure? And it's flexible, dynamic, comprehensive, integrated, agnostic, powerful, uh, and free or nearly free. Um, and the upshot was over time, but now we have that resource for you guys to tap into, uh, and I encourage you to do that. 
You can go to adapt.libretix.org and you can request an account right now. If you're a verified instructor, uh, we will process that typically within hours, if not a day. Uh, and then you can start perusing through it. Use it as a question bank as you want. Um, and there are obviously lots of capabilities or, or that ADAPT provides you that I'm unable to discuss right now, given time constraints. But we do have videos on our YouTube uh, channel at youtube.libretext.org uh, that shows people how to build courses, assignments, questions, and such that's necessary for that. So with that, I will thank you for your attention. I have eight minutes left that I can address any questions or if People want me to show you what those technologies look like real time. I'm also quite comfortable in order to use that time for that. So thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to present ADAPT. We're very excited with what we provide uh, and we're very excited with the impact of what ADAPT is going to be doing in the near future. Thank you so much, Delmar. Um, we haven't had any questions come in yet, but I would encourage um, our attendees to please submit them in the chat. Um, and great timing. I, my timer will go off here in just a couple of minutes to let you know that we have 5 minutes left. So we do have time for these questions and, um, Delmar, did you say, can you drop in the chat that, um, where you go for the account? You mentioned, uh, adapt at Libra text. Yes, I can. Do you want to uh, drop I, that in the chat? Yeah. Uh, I need to get access. I can't. Ha I can't share and write at the same time, so I have to. Uh, okay, let me see if I can find it here. Um, is no, it? I just, I just that... have to cancel my sharing. Um, that's all. Um, okay. And then I have, then I have access to the chat. Uh, it's okay, the, great. The beauties of this uh, this technology. Uh, Otherwise, I think I found the URL, but I just wanted to provide it for people in case they wanted to access that question bank you mentioned. Yes. Uh, the, actually, I can't. I don't see where the chat is on here. It's in the lower right, but let me, oh, um, yeah, I've you. just put a, a, a URL in there. I yeah. think I maybe have the right spot. You did. You did. Yes. Okay. Uh, Good. And I'll mention, uh, I pasted the studio, um, and just in case people didn't see the YouTube. Uh, our YouTube is pretty straightforward at youtube.libretext.org. Um, right. And you know, this right here is a uh, one of my questions for uh, students, and it's a simple chemistry question where the students uh, upload these things. Um, it has a bit more sophistication because it needs to deal with what's called significant figures and other things that are uh, meant to, to do these things that you don't typically have to deal with in terms of uh, math or statistic based questions. So. Great. Um, All right, we do have 5 minutes left, so uh, I think I've also given our attendees the ability to unmute themselves if they would like. So, they could ask questions directly or feel free to put them in the chat and we can um, pick them up that way. Or if there's anything else you wanted to uh, demonstrate. Delmar, we do have 5 minutes yet. Well, I, mean, I can certainly, <clears throat> this is what I thought I was doing, but unfortunately I stepped away. Uh, um, this is uh, an example of, I'll just skip over. This is an example of a web work question that's embedded into ADAPT. Uh, and again, it's a chemistry based question. Like I mentioned before, it has some underlying code behind it. That's not overly important for this conversation, but it gives you an opportunity in order to see um, what students would get that's out there. If people are interested in a specific topic, I can certainly pull up other things like the Spanish <laughs> topic of uh, physics and other things. We have uh, under our commons a uh, a wide uh, collection of resources that we've been building collections of, of these things, oftentimes around um, popular OER like uh, OpenStax uh, and other sources, uh, and we'll be building that nonstop over the next few years uh, that people are able to tap on and use. Right now, I can just parse through them, uh, but they're going to be uh, in this case here. I think most of these things are open ended. Uh, questions, uh, these ones haven't been converted to auto graded. The studio, this is what the studio looks like. Um, uh, and 
uh, and you can ask us the question, like, here's a Spanish uh, course. I think they're doing a uh, hackathon. Actually, they started a hackathon 45 minutes ago, which makes sense why there's a lot of Spanish questions right here because they're actively being built. Um, there was a Omar, question we, that popped Omar, up. we do have a question. We have a question from Angela Lee at WCTC who wanted to know if you are already signed up for Libra or Libra text, do you have to register separately to access ADAPT or is it all under one user access? Right now, you have to do it separately. So you contact us and send me an email. However, uh, this thing is being all integrated into a single sign on uh, system. So we have half of the Libraverse set up like that. Studio will be part of it. Um, and then it basically will be one account that gives you Adapt Studio, Commons a Conductor, access to uh, making books in the library. Uh, it'll be all uh, available for you. And we expect that to be completed by the end of this year, if not within the next month. Um, so okay. right now it's separate. Great. Thank you. And Angela said thank you as well. Great, thank you. Um, like I said, if you have any, if you if you have a collection of questions that you're willing to donate to us, uh, uh, to the community for people to be able to capitalize on it with all the appropriate attribution that comes with Creative Commons licensing or any other licensing that you may have selected, uh, please contact me directly. Uh, I'm not hard to find. If you just do a Google on Delmar and OER, you'll find it or LibreText. Um, and that includes H5P, if you have question banks in your learning management system that you want to contribute or any other source, please let us know. Uh, again, this is a community built project for people for the community in order to capitalize on uh, and its success is based on uh, what people have contributed to it, not just based on uh, what my team has done. So, I will stop. I think this looks like it's a good time in order to stop the recording unless anyone else has any questions. And I thank you for attending. Thank you so much, Delmar. We're getting some thanks in the chat as well. And I think I will stop recording. And thank you again. Thank you.